Silver Springs was receiving a million visitors a year in the 60s. It was Disney World. Yes, Ocala. There were signs saying visit Silver Springs as far away as Maine. Half the people I saw there in the 70s were from Europe. Everybody in Europe knew about Silver Springs. You remember charting your way down Interstate 75 from Ohio and Now they all know about Disney World. Silver Springs is the largest spring in Florida and in the world. It's the real natural attraction of Florida. My name's Bob Knight, uh, the director of the Howard T. Odom Florida Springs Institute. I've been uh, building our credibility and uh, providing education and research related to springs protection ever since. Everybody's got forests, everybody's got estuaries, everybody's got this, that, and the other thing. What Florida has is springs, and there's no place else in the world where there's so many springs or such big springs. And they're a perfect laboratory to study how aquatic systems work because you can see everything. By 1950s, they were the same as they were described in the 1800s when northerners came down and saw Silver Springs for the first time. They wrote about it and they talked about the amazing clarity of the water. Dr. Odom said, well, that's, I'm, I'm going to study those. And so he put together a team of scientists from the University of Florida and elsewhere to study Silver Springs. And he decided to study every aspect of Silver Springs. And he saw Silver Springs had changed, just changed enormously between the 1950s and the 1970s when he came back to Florida. The main thing he noticed that was different was the fish were different. The fish populations had diminished you know, no, very noticeably. What was clear was the dam was interrupting the migration of the species of fish that had been in Silver Springs in the 50s. There's no doubt about it. Um, you can see it. You can go down to the dam and you can see the striped bass trying to get through it to go up and spawn in the, in the Ocklawaha and Silver Rivers. Uh, they used to be in the Silver River. They, they, they are not there anymore and uh, haven't been for a long time. What we found was tragic how much it had changed. It had changed so much more in that second 25 years compared to the first 25 years between Odom's study and my first study. The fish populations were down 92% from Odom's study. In other words, there were, there were just like no fish in Silver Springs anymore, which is what attracted so many people. Productivity was down 10 or 20%. In other words, the whole system had lost enough function that for a human, if you lost that much, much function, you'd be in the hospital. And the river had lost 25% of its flow. It, you know, it's lifeblood. And, and I, you know, I, I sat out there day after day when I was doing my 1970 study, measuring the heartbeat of Silver Spring. In 2004 and five, it was, it was down. I mean, it was, it was down. The, the heartbeat was down that this, this patient was not doing well since then. I mean, that was 16 years ago, 15 years ago now, and Silver is still dying. Silver Springs, to be restored, the Ahawaha needs to be restored. The avenue for these fish and manatees needs to be restored. That is right there on the menu of things that have to be done to restore Silver Springs, is to remove that dam. That'll allow manatees free access into the river. Silver Springs will have a much greater economic benefit if we get manatees regularly. It can go back to a million people a year. If the Akawaha being open, not just the manatees, but let the native fish come back in. It's the channel catfish that can't come up the river now. They just don't make it through the dam. Uh, the mullet come through, but in very small proportions make it through the dam. Striped bass, they want to come to the Ocklawaha uh, River. The eels, the sh American shad, they, they will be back.
I went to Silver Springs in 1953. I was five years old and I saw those catfish for myself and I saw the other fish. It was an amazing thing as a young child to go out on the glass bottom boat and see all these fish. I mean, it was just, you just couldn't do that in most places. It will eventually correct itself as all ecosystems do. Uh, we won't be here possibly to see it or we might, you know, you never know. And the Rodman Dam will go away. It will be gone. It is temporary. All human works will be gone. It would be nice to live to see that.